Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Josie's Point of View, where we focus on human interest stories from the Carolinas and beyond. Today it's Wednesday and it's August the 3rd, 2022. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to extend to you a warm welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you find the information here to be informative. And if you're a returning viewer, by all means, thank you for coming back. You know, I always say the tie changes so frequently here on these YouTube streets. So you always have to acknowledge where your support comes from. And I want you to know, I sincerely thank you for your support. Feel free to like and to share this video. And don't forget to subscribe. We're stepping beyond the Carolinas today and our stories coming out of the U.S. Army military base at Fort Gordon, which is located in Augusta, Georgia. Take a look at the headline. And it reads, lightning strike kills one soldier and injures nine others. I'll provide you with a summary here. And as always, I'll place links to a few of the full articles in the description box. Now, this is a bit of an unusual news story because it involves lightning strike that took the life of a young soldier last month. And I say unusual because statistics show that billions of lightning strike hit the ground in the U.S. every year. But the chance of being struck by lightning is less than one in a million. And the number of reported fatalities are also very small. But Georgia has been documented as one of the states with the higher number of lightning related deaths. And when the odds are not in our favor and there's a lightning related fatality, Fatality and multiple injuries on a military installation, I think this is a story worth talking about. But I also want to take just a few minutes to pay tribute to the young soldier who lost his life. And this is what has been reported by various news sources about this incident. It all happened on the morning of Wednesday, 20 July, 2022. Now that morning, it was fairly warm. Reports say the temperature was around 80 degrees outside and a storm was said to be moving through the area at about 45 miles per hour. Now around 11, 10 a.m., as a group of 10 soldiers who are participating in a training exercise, they were struck by lightning. The soldiers were transported to the military hospital and Fort Gordon, that's Dwight D. Eisenhower Army Medical Center. They were transported to the ER there, and one soldier could not be revived. He died from his injuries later that afternoon. Now, it was reported that the soldiers were part of the Medical Reserve Command, and they were participating in their annual training exercise for medical units at the time. And this is an annual requirement where several different units, uh, reserve units are training together. Now, nine out of the 10 soldiers were from the same company, which is the 933rd Forward Resuscitative Surgical Company. And that's a company that performs emergency surgery and other urgent treatment on wounded soldiers in combat. So nine out of the 10 were from the 933rd and there was one soldier from the 74th 58th Medical Operations Readiness Group. And I've since learned that the 933rd is based out of Paducah, Kentucky. And just about now, some of you may question why soldiers were training outside and there was lightning. But there are so many factors that should be taken into consideration here. Yes, there are policies in place, but we really don't know how the current weather was being monitored as this training was taking place. I'm sure there's an ongoing investigation right now and many changes I'm sure will be made accordingly. The deceased soldier was identified as 41-year-old Army Reservist Sergeant First Class Michael D. Clark, a native of Springfield, Mass., and at the time of his death, he was a resident of the state of Connecticut. He had served in the Army as well as in the Army Reserve for to over 22 years and was currently an operating room specialist and a valued member of the unit's combat surgical team. We know he was a combat veteran, that he'd had four combat-related deployments. He'd been to Iraq, to Kuwait, and two tours to Afghanistan. He also served on multiple humanitarian missions throughout the world. This was a very impressive young man. I took a few minutes to review his obituary, and it states that Sergeant First Class Clark was trained on active duty as an operating room specialist, and then after he returned home to Connecticut, he worked in a few different hospitals as an OR specialist. We do know he's married and a father of two. I saw a few pictures with his entire of he with his entire family. I decided not to show family members, and that's not a measure of disrespect. It's just a personal thing for me. Uh, they're grieving. They need to be able to do that in peace. They don't need to be blasted in individuals' personal um, commentary. The obituary also describes him as a third-generation soldier who loved his country, his community, and caring for his family. The commander of the 933rd 
uh, Ford Resuscitative Surgical Company did issue a statement, and here's a statement right here, and he just, he acknowledged um, Sergeant Clark's accomplishments, and he described him as a loving father, a loving husband, a loving father, and a patriot who, would, who deeply loved our country. He also stated his leadership knowledge, experience, and love for his fellow soldier was immeasurable. And of course, he expressed condolences to his family and other loved ones. And upon learning of, of the death of Sergeant First Class Clark, the governor of Connecticut directed that all flags, all state and U.S. flags below it would have staff beginning at sunrise on that Wednesday and ending at sunset on Thursday in honor of this fallen soldier. Now, one of the things that I noticed, and I thought it was really, really awesome. Now, not awesome that he died, but it was an awesome gesture, is that the reserves promoted him to Master Sergeant. So they promoted him to the next higher level. And this was from his obituary right here. And um, as for funeral plans, it was stated that viewing for family and friends will take place today, August 3rd, and his actual funeral services will be held tomorrow, August 4th. And of course, we're sending our prayers and words of condolences to his family and friends and to all those who've been impacted by his loss. You know, one of the things I always say is that we must continue to pray for our soldiers. We need to pray that they be kept safe, free from unknown dangers. Who would believe a lightning strike? But it does happen. And as shocking as it may seem to many of us, the truth is another faithful warrior has completed his journey. So Master Sergeant Michael D. Clark, your mission is now complete. So rest well, my friend, and thank you for your service. And that's all I have for you right now. Feel free to leave me a comment below and let me know what you think about this video. And by all means, feel free to like it and to share it. And if you haven't done so already, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel by clicking on that red subscribe button. It's at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. And if you click on the bell that looks just like this one, that's the notification bell. If you click on that notification bell, you'll be the first to know whenever a new video is uploaded. I thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.